Hi Aries, welcome to your November 2017 astral update. It's Raina here. Well, Aries, you have a strong emphasis on the eighth house during the month of November. And what is really important to note about this is that every November, for the majority of the month, you have the sun in your eighth house. The eighth house in the universal chart is ruled by Scorpio, and it's the house of sex, death, and other people's money. That's how it typically is boiled down to. But it's also about intimacy. It's all, and that could be uh, sexual, but also emotional. And it's also about issues involving anything metaphysical. So the occult, different mediumistic experiences that involve talking to the dead and things like that, that could be featured as well in the eighth house. I feel that for some of you, there is something along those lines with the mysteries of life because you have these different triggers to various areas of your chart that deals with um, spirituality. And one example, besides this strong emphasis in the eighth house, which by the way, includes Jupiter transiting there for a whole year. And actually uh, 13 months, if you're listening in October. So Jupiter's in Scorpio in the eighth house. You have Venus going there after the 7th, on the 7th of November. And I mean, I could, the list goes on and on. Well, there's a new moon there on November 18th. As I said, the sun is going to be there until the 21st of November. But anyway, the other triggers to your spiritual life is that Saturn has been in your ninth house for two and a half years. It's going to leave that sector in December, but in November it'll be on all month, that transit. So you're talking about the area in the ninth house that deals with your higher mind, your philosophical construct, any kind of religious organization, things of that nature. So that's about you becoming more set on your spiritual path in general. But it's on a more overt level. The 12th house is the intuitive side of things. And that actually is going to be affected as well because your 12th house is Pisces and Neptune is in that house. Neptune is in its own sign. And in the 12th house, it has been retrograde But on the 22nd, it will go direct in the 12th house. So that will kind of increase your dreaminess, but also that sense of unreality that only Neptune can bestow upon a person. But in general, it's a beautiful spiritual aspect. And and not to mention that you have Uranus in your sign and Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. It's kind of that lightning fast, um, sixth sense. And that has kind of been imbued in within you for the last several years and, and continuing until I believe it's 2019 officially out of Aries. So in addition to giving you maybe more, flashes of inspiration and psychic hits, you may also have had a lot of changes in your persona, in in your direction, just in your basic self, because Uranus can be very unpredictable and all of a sudden take a completely opposite direction. So there's a lot going on for you again, as I said, dealing with other people's money. And I think that for some of you, this may be connected to a divorce. Now, if you're 
watching this or listening to this, I should say, and you're saying, hey, I have a great marriage, then this is not for you. I'm not saying you're just going to suddenly up and divorce uh, next month if you're listening in October. Um, or if you're listening in November, hey, I'm going to get divorced next week and you had no plans to do so earlier. This is going to be for people whose relationship has already gone to the dogs. But there could be some massive, like uh, the War of the Roses type of, um, <laughs> you know, battle of possessions because you have Mars in that seventh house of marriage. And then on top of that, you have this concentration of energy in the eighth house that deals with estates, that deals with other people's finances. And of course, that could be connected to an inheritance issue as well. And so it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, be very careful about the battles you pick. You know, Aries is the prize fighter, but everything shouldn't be necessarily waged war upon. Even if you are feeling that somebody is trying to get one over on you, maybe a family member, please consider all of the circumstances around what is going on because it's too easy to get caught up in the heat of the moment and then you end up with a lot of ugliness. You know, I think of the Five of Swords in the Tarot where it's like, a victory that maybe comes your way, but at what price? So just, um, just keep uh, the high watch and um, take the high road. It doesn't mean that you should definitely lie down and allow other people to walk all over you. I'm not saying that, but just not being too cutthroat about it and seeing the other person's point of view. But Jupiter is in the sector for a whole year, so there may be more than one incident that gives you this sense of expansion related to other people's resources. Even if you are married, you may have a spouse that gets an inheritance. You may have a spouse that somehow substantially increases their income, and so by happenstance or by um, direct connection, you benefit from their gain. And um, so Mercury on the fifth of the month leaves that sector and goes into your ninth house of the higher mind. So you may be signing contracts when Mercury is in the eighth house or talking to people about an estate and just kind of getting all your ducks in a row. And then Mercury goes into that ninth house and that can be a great one, two punch where you kind of review things and say, you know, was I in alignment with my higher purpose here? Am I doing the bidding of somebody who is an enlightened person or am I just grasping Am I full of any kind of vindictiveness because of something that was done against me? And so now I want to put the screws on to somebody else, whether it's a divorce that is particularly nasty or a family issue where you felt like you were always treated like the black sheep. And now you have this opportunity to get back at people. It doesn't mean that you have to do so. And uh, you may feel like tempted, but you might want to think about it. On the fourth of the month, there's a full moon in Taurus. This is your second house of earned income. And for Aries people, this can be a good time for you to benefit from some sort of raise that you get for the job that you do. In some cases, a full moon can bring an ending to a, an income stream that you have set up for yourself. But I tend to look at full moons in a very positive light and see them as culminations, as the apex, the height, the heightened 
state of something. And so when it comes to the money that you earn, this could just simply be more of it available and things like that. It is possible that on the heels of your own full moon in October, that some areas people are radically changing their lives and they are maybe even quitting a job. And so that would be reflected in that. And maybe you're like the fool in the, in the tarot and you're going off on a new journey and maybe you've just decided, you know, I'm getting divorced or I am experiencing the need to radically shift my life. So I'm going to quit this job that I can't stand and I'm going to travel for six months. And if you have the means to do so, you may not even have any kind of uh, destination. You may just look at it as a grand adventure. And um, whatever is happening... I think that you are definitely think being a deep thinker. You know, that's the other thing that I wanted to say with all of these planets in the eighth house. I mean, my goodness, you may really be influenced by some of the mysteries of life, the occult, the occult just means hidden. A lot of times we've been taught that there's something scary, you know, the occult, what that word means. It just means hidden knowledge. And why was it hidden? It was hidden because there were people that profited from ignorance. And the ignorance is knowing your true self. If you believe that you are dependent upon another person to speak to God and to, you know, to commune with God, to feel comforted by the ideas of death, which that eighth house represent. If that's something that you're taught that you have to do through some religious figure, then you may believe that tools like astrology are wrong because you think that's playing God. Well, it's not playing God. First of all, you can't predict what is going to happen in your life or the life of somebody else. And I think that um, all of these forecasts that I make are always done in the spirit of looking at trends, not looking at something that is etched in stone. And one of the big reasons why is that it, if you do that, you encourage passivity in people and fatalism where they think that their lives are kind of um, decided in advance and they don't do anything about changing their circumstances. So that is totally not what I stand for. And I readily admit that these, some of these transits may not come to pass for some of you. And that's okay because we're still talking about themes that matter that to people's lives. And even just if we look at it as a philosophical thing, it still can have value in people's lives. So during this time, you may be uncharacteristically quiet, Aries, because the eighth house is very mysterious. It's a water house, so it tends to be more internalized, the energy that you are kind of expressing. And you may be more thoughtful. Aries tends to be very active you know, out in an outer way, active and sometimes loud, sometimes very, you know, very vocal about things. But this is more thoughtful, more reflective, and therefore it's easier on the nerves, <laughs> you know, to other people involved because areas can be quite boisterous. So that's something that you're going through and it's almost like being on a on a retreat of sorts so what else is happening so you're having that new moon in the eighth house new beginnings either with other people's money with any kind of intimacy issues that arise so perhaps for those people who 
have had any kind of conflict in their marriage, you may come to terms with it and really kind of dig down deep in each other's emotional makeup and, and bear your souls to one another. That's always a possibility. So the other thing that I want to say, and oh, and Venus is going there on the 7th. So Venus might be you receiving money from some kind of an estate after the 7th, okay? Venus can bring money, and Venus also can bring harmony to a situation connecting other people's money. Mars is yet to go into this sector. Mars is still in the seventh house. And Mars is your ruler. So it's particularly important, but it's important to all of us because Mars gets us into high gear, you know, gets pushes us. And for you in that seventh house, it can indicate conflicts with a loved one, a partner, or possibly a lot of activity with your partner. So you may crave solitude as a way to counteract all of the time that you have to spend with that person. Not that you don't enjoy it, but still, there may be times where you really need to decompress. Neptune turns direct on the 22nd of the month. And I should uh, just acknowledge that the sun goes into your ninth house the day before that on the 21st, sun in Sagittarius. And Sagittarius is a friendly sign to Aries, both fire signs, so it's a trine. And for Sagittarius, this is this uh, Neptune Direct is taking place in that 12th house. So as I said before, you may be feeling a sense of having been disillusioned maybe since June when Neptune was retrograde and you saw things a little bit more clearly that related to stuff that you might not have wanted to really deal with. Um, that's what the 12th house can be. It can be like a dumping ground for things that you don't really want to face right now. And Neptune going, but it, it allows you to see things. It's like pulling back the curtain, seeing things as they are. And then Neptune goes direct on the 22nd. It's very good for artists. It's very good for mystics in the Aries, uh, in the sign of Aries. And, um, yeah, so that could be something, uh, this transit may spark for some of you a particular spiritual period in your life where you're really going down a certain spiritual path. And when Neptune is direct, you feel more idealistic about doing so. When Neptune went retrograde, you might be questioning a lot of those beliefs. So it's like you regain some of that sense of wonder about the universe. So yeah, like I said, I think there's a lot of kind of dreamy energy, or maybe I didn't say that, but that's what I me meant. And... Um, in any case, Aries, I hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like a private reading, please visit me at rainandmoonastrology.com or you can click on the link below. Take care of yourselves. Bye.
systems.